Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this little fabric covered chair. Now I've made this one for the desk in my study, but I've actually based it on the design of one of our dining room chairs. So if you wanted to make it as a dining room chair, as a set of four or six, then you could do that. Now the cutting list for this project is in the description box below. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to begin by gluing together the two seat back pieces, and that's the pieces cut from the 2.5 millimeter sheet wood, the 332nd of an inch. Now, the only reason I'm doing these in two pieces is because it needs to be five millimeters thick, the same thickness as the leg. And as you know, I only cut by hand, and I find it quite difficult to cut five millimeter thick sheet wood, that's 13 64ths of an inch sheet wood, with a knife so I always just cut two pieces from the thinner wood but if you use a different method for cutting maybe you use a machine cutter or a laser cutter or something like that then you can just cut that from the five millimeter sheet wood okay so apply glue to one side and I've got some clamps here at the ready and we'll use those to secure the pieces together so apply glue, making sure you get it right along the edges, like that, and then press the two pieces together, making sure you've got flush edges all the way around. And if you use too much glue, they might sort of slide about a little bit, so make sure that you're pressing them at the same time as you're sort of pushing them into alignment like that. You can use your cutting mat as well to make sure that you've got those flush edges. And we'll be sanding this piece as well once it's dry to make sure that we've got nice straight edges all the way around. And then just put some clamps all the way around, clamp my finger in then. One at each side as well, just to really hold that together. So that can be put to one side to dry, and in the meantime we can start preparing our seat part. So take the seat bottom part, and that's the smaller of those two sort of oblong parts you've got there, and we're going to cut a five millimeter square from the front corners of the piece so that the longest edge is going across like that and we'll be cutting the corners down here which will be the front of our seat for our front legs to slot into. So begin by making a pencil mark five millimeters along that front edge of the wood and that's 13 64ths of an inch. Same at the other end there like that and then you can turn the piece and do the five millimeter mark again going in the opposite direction and you can actually draw out a little square at that time. The same at the other edge. Just like that. We're now going to cut those out and when you're cutting a section from a piece of wood it's always important that you cut against the grain first. So my grain runs from there to there so we'll be cutting in this direction first. And that's just because if you cut the other way around, then the wood will just split. So just using the tip of your knife, go along that first line there. Try to get right into that corner. And then turn the piece and cut across your other line there like that. It's always much easier cutting in the direction of the grain. I think I've still got a little bit joined in the corner there. And there's the first piece gone. And then do the same at the other corner. Like that. And then cut that section out as well. So we're now going to construct the seat part and it's very similar to constructing a drawer only this time we've got some cutouts along the front edge. 
So begin by applying glue along the sides. I hope you didn't hear my stomach rumbling then. <laughs> it's getting close to lunchtime. So attach the first side and you just want to make sure that you've got a nice flush line along this back edge. So press that into place and then attach the remaining one. Oh, stuck to my finger then. Like that. Again, making sure you've got that nice flush back edge along there. That's the part we're going to be joining to the seat back. I'm just going to grab my spare pieces of strip wood and I really like using these to sort of press pieces together because then you know you're getting a nice even pressure all the way along like that. Then carefully sort of slide that piece across your work surface and that can be left to dry off for a moment. We can then attach the front and back pieces. Put that back down again. Pop the pieces into place so again you've got nice flush edges along each side. Same with the back piece. You may need to sort of pull the sides out very gently just to meet the edges of those pieces. As they dry they tend to sort of try to fall inwards almost. You can just sort of pick that up and give it a good squeeze together. So then apply glue around the top edges. Like that. And then just put the top piece into place. Closing it all off and making sure again that you've got those nice flush edges all the way around. We will be sanding around there as well, so don't worry if you've got any little sort of overhanging edges. Carefully squeeze it all together. Give it a good press. And that piece as well can be left to dry. So I now want to just very gently shape the bottom of each leg. So with your sandpaper flat on your work surface, just take the leg, hold it at a 45 degree angle, and as you sweep it towards you, bring it into an upright position. And that just sort of curves over that bottom edge. So do that on each edge of the leg or of the strip. And then just finish that piece off with a piece of 500 grade sandpaper just to really even it up. And do the same thing with one end of each leg. So we're now going to attach the legs. So once your back pieces have dried together, sand around all edges so that you've got that nice flush piece we were talking about. And then apply glue along each edge. And if you notice, this has got quite a sort of dark line of wood grain in it. And whenever I'm making a project where I'm going to be covering the wood, as we're obviously be going, going to be doing with our chair, I always use up my pieces of wood that aren't you know, very nice to look at and that I wouldn't want in a piece of furniture. And if you were to paint over that piece of dark grain, you would still see it. So it's always best to keep pieces like this, but then use them in a project where they're not going to be seen. We're then going to attach the back legs so that we've got that nice flush line along the top again and make sure that you've got your rounded ends at the bottom there, they're our feet. So press those together and then I've got my spare strip here and again I'm going to use that to make sure that everything's flush along the top there. So press everything up against it, press together at the same time and that piece can then be left to dry. 
And then with this piece, we're going to pop the legs into those little cutouts. And this will be the front of our seat. So apply glue around the ends of the leg and get it on the top of the leg as well. Like that. Take the one out. Pop that into the hole. And then press it against the two, so, well, the front and the side like that. And press it down at the same time. And make sure you press it against the front and side because if you just sort of press it in and down, chances are it will sort of turn wonky over time. Same with the other one. And we're actually going to upholster these two pieces separately and then join them together. And that way I just find you get a neater finish with your fabric. Same with that one. So push it down and then push it against the front and the side. And I also sanded around this seat part before attaching these legs, again to make sure we've got a nice flush piece. Get rid of any excess glue around the legs. So once your leg section has completely dried, we're going to round over the top, at the inside of the seat. So hold the piece against your sandpaper, quite flat like that, and then sweep it towards you, bringing it into an upright position. So as you can see, that's just starting to round over, but I want it to be a little bit more rounded than that to give it a nicer shape. So just keep going until you're happy with the shape. And then you can finish that off in your hand with a piece of finer grade sandpaper and I'm using 240 grade and just really make a nice curve along that top edge there. We're also going to create a curve along the front edge of the seat. But we're just going to do that in our hand with our 240 grade sandpaper again. So just sweep it along that front edge of the seat there at a 45 degree angle. You can also sweep the paper over the edge like that, just to really sort of round it off. Before we attach the fabric, we're going to paint the legs. Now you might want to leave yours as natural wood or add a wood dye or wood varnish, but I'm going to paint mine as I've done the other pieces of furniture in the study using my pre-mixed cream paint. And this is just an emulsion paint. When you paint the back legs, you only need to go up as high as where the sort of back panel starts, as all of that's going to be covered with fabric. So once the paint has dried, just gently sand the legs. And now we're going to start covering the pieces. And we're going to begin by covering the back piece. So I'll put that piece to one side. So I've got here three pieces of fabric and the first two pieces are to go around the side of the chair. So you want to cut a piece that's going to go along the side like that, just a little bit at the top there to fold over, and then leave a bit at the bottom as well so that you can create a hem, so that we've got a nice neat edge along this visible edge here. So you want two pieces of that length. In fact, let me lay that down on there to show you a bit more clearly. The length of that. So I've got a little bit overhanging at the top there which will fold over and a little bit at the bottom which will create a hem with and then you want an equal amount on either side to actually fold and glue inwards like that. And you'll want two pieces like that, one for each side. And then you want to cut a piece which is going to go all the way over the back. And again, you want a bit at each edge. 
so that we can create a hem in the fabric so it's nice and neat at the edges and then you want it to come level with the front of the seat there and then leave a bit of a flap underneath which will be folding under to cover that underside of the seat bit there. So that's the length of your second piece. And we're going to begin now by gluing over those hems that I just spoke about. So I'm going to begin with the side pieces. I'm just going to glue up a little hem at one end of each piece. Probably about three millimetres, one eighth of an inch. And I'm just using my Gorilla Wood Glue for this and I find that it works really well with fabric projects. Obviously if you've got a favourite fabric glue then use that. So just turn that up and press it down. Take with that one. those to one side to dry and then if you're using a stripe it's helpful because you can cut your fabric along the stripe so that you know that it's straight and I've also used the stripes to leave an equal hem at each side so I've got sort of three and a half stripes at each side so I'm going to begin by folding over one side and then I'm going to measure it again and fold over the other hem. And that's just because we need this hemmed piece to be exactly the same thickness as the back of our chair. So just do one side at a time. And also because we're not sort of using um, padding on the back of the chair, if you're using a plain fabric, you may just see the, the hems through the fabric. So I would advise using something with a pattern to prevent that from happening. So lay the chair alongside that seam. And then you can work out how much you need to fold over and it's just over the sort of three and a half stripes this time. And what I'm actually going to do is fold that in first so I know where I've got to glue. So crease it in with your finger like that. And then you can check again that it's the right width. And it should be on the inside of the chair rather than overlapping. Once it's glued into place, we don't want there to be any overhanging at each side. So I'm just taking it in a little bit more. So I can now glue that side down. And that piece as well can be left to dry for a moment. So we're going to attach the side pieces now. So begin by applying glue alongside the edge of the leg there. And then onto the front and back of the chair. And remember the back is your straight edge and we curled over the front edge. So keep that in mind as we're going along. especially important when we come to sort of attach the two pieces together that that rounded edge is on the inside so the bit that you would actually lean your back against up there like that as well when you're gluing fabric if you apply the glue and then just let it start to dry off just for a minute or so not even that long that will prevent the glue from seeping through the fabric so never just apply your fabric straight away when your glue has just gone on. And I read that little tip many years ago in a Doll's House magazine and I've always remembered it and it does work. So that's worth remembering. So with your fabric on the work surface, 
place the side of the chair down onto it and if like me you're using a stripe make sure that the stripe is lined up with the edge of the chair and you want that hem at the bottom to be level you know with the bit where the back stops so the, the bottom of the back is what I'm trying to say so I just move that over a little bit I'm just on the inside of that white line there so give it a good press down and then bring up your sides and I'm doing both of them at the same time don't pull them too tightly but just pull them round so that you're getting a nice flat edge along there and then fold in the top flap like that so you're creating two little triangle sections at the top there now I don't usually like cutting sections out of fabric because it always worries me that it's going to sort of fray onto the edge that you're trying to keep neat but we are going to cut these flaps off this time just because I don't want any bulk to be there at the top when we come to wrap round the piece of back fabric or you know the longer piece of fabric so just really carefully cut those flaps off but so you're not cutting too close to the edge of the fabric that's visible like that so you're still like leaving a little corner bit there and then you can apply a little bit more glue if you need to but if you've still got some under there that's still a bit tacky just really squeeze it down use your nail <laughs> can't use that one I I was opening a pistachio nut or shell in a pistachio nut my nail split right down so it's gone I had to cut it really short because it kept catching on things and now it's just quite weak so let me turn it around and use this thumbnail <laughs> probably didn't need to know that <laughs> Too much information as they say so really press that fabric down at the top so you've got a nice neat edge and that's the edge that we're going to be seeing so that will be covered you want that edge to be nice and clean and neat like that and then we'll do the same at the other side Again, I'm just going to let that dry off for a minute before I attach the fabric. Okay, so line that up again along a line. And I've just checked in the other side there, and I've got that blue line running down the centre of this side. So I'm going to get the other side the same. So fold in your sides push in that little top flap creating those two little corners and then snip the corners so that you're not snipping too close to the edge of the chair and then flatten with a good nail <laughs> and that side's actually gone a little bit nicer and you always find that the second time you do it you always get a, a slightly better result I suppose because you've had a little bit of practice already so leave that to dry for a moment okay so now bring in your other strip of fabric and first of all we want to cut out that little section which will fold under at the back so with the front of your chair facing you so that's again the bit that curls inwards place the fabric right along the bottom there level with the bottom of the back and then curl it around making sure that it's straight along the sides and those sides actually blend in really nicely there 
and then bring in your scissors and you want to cut on the inside of each leg. So make a little cut level with the bottom of the back piece again and as thick as the leg so that we can then bring that flap around when we glue it into place. So take that off of there now and then these little flaps that we've got that will sit at the bottom of the back leg cut about half away that side as well and then we're going to oops sorry we're going to glue those up to make another couple of little hems just so we don't get any fraying along the legs at the back there Bring that up like that, making sure you're keeping a straight line there. And give it a good firm press down. You don't want any sort of ridges there. Like that. Same at the other side. If you're using something like a leather that doesn't fray, then you probably won't have to do all this hemming. Or some other sort of fabric that doesn't fray. Okay, so this piece is now ready to attach. So let's begin by applying glue to the front. I'll just put a bit more glue on my card. And you just want to be really careful here that you're not getting glue onto the sort of pieces of fabric that will be exposed. And we'll just do this in sections. So we'll do this front part first. And then we'll work our way around. Make sure you're getting the glue right along the edge of the back there. We want to press this flap of fabric down right against those sides. Outside as well. And then I'm just going to put a little bit along the top so that we can fold the fabric over when we get there and then we'll work our way down the back. So I've got quite a bit on there so I'm just going to clean a little bit off and then leave it to dry again for a minute. Okay so begin by attaching the straight edge of your fabric along that bottom edge. So that you've got a nice straight line along the bottom there and then you can really carefully press your sides into place. And on the other side as well. And I've got a pretty good fabric match there. All those little sort of X's are almost joining in along the side. That's sort of worth thinking about when you're doing it. So we can just come around over that top, like that. Leave that flap hanging there, and then we can apply glue to the back. And then also put a little bit along that edge underneath the back there. Again, just leave that to dry off for 30 seconds or so and then carefully bring that top bit over round onto the back. Got a bit of a crease there. If that happens, just lift it and reapply. Get those sides nice and neat again. stretched my fabric a little bit so I've got a little bit of a ruffle there which I'm sort of going to try and blend in. Sort of neatening off that top edge there. And then if you've sort of spent a bit of time you know manipulating the fabric you might need to just apply a little bit more glue. 
and pop a little bit more under there. Like that down. And I might just need to put a little bit more in there, put a bit on the fabric as well. And then fold that in. And it's okay if you've got a bit of a flap there that you need to stick down at the base of the back there because this part will be covered with the seat. So there's our chair back. That can be left to dry off. And now we can cover the seat part. So begin by cutting a piece of fabric or a square of fabric, leaving about 20 millimetres to an inch around each edge like that. So we've got a nice bit to fold over onto the bottom. And then bring in your double-sided tape and we're going to actually apply this to the seat and the front part of the chair. And I like using double-sided tape when I'm using this wadding and that's what we're going to be using just to pad the seat out a little bit. And if I find if you use glue with this that it tends to go a little bit lumpy so the glue actually dries into little lumps underneath the wadding. So if you're using this it's a good idea to use double-sided tape. Let's get my other scissors to cut this with. So just start it at the back there on that line. and then bring it over the front. Like that. And then do another piece alongside that and we'll trim that off. And then with the wadding, I find that if you leave it in one piece, it looks a little bit too thick. So I always split it in half. Just to make it a little bit thinner. But it will still give us that padding that we need. So just sort of tear it apart like that. And then I should have to use that side. Yeah, that's enough. So then cut it to size so that it fits to the seat and then over the front. Just over there, remove the back in from the tape. Stick that down and again start at the back. And don't worry if it's overhanging because we can trim that off and press it along the front as well and then trim that off. Trim it on that side as well. If you're using a striped fabric as I am, it's a good idea before you start covering the seat part to line up the fabric with the back. So if you just line that up on there so your stripes are matching or your pattern, and then place the seat part on and then you know where you can fold that around like that so then just put that there and put the back to one side and if you actually make a little bit of a crease along there just hold my finger there so I know which line it is and then you'll know that that's got to go alongside the side of the chair part there and we'll get a nice match on the fabric. So what we're actually going to do now is bring the fabric around to the bottom of the seat and we're going to be cutting out some little sections so that we can fold it all round nice and neatly. Now having the legs there makes that a little bit more difficult so we'll be cutting some sections out and I haven't, I've had a bit of a practice run but I haven't done it like this before. I normally would attach the legs afterwards but with this particular design that wouldn't work. So we'll we'll do it and then what we'll be doing is adding a strip of fabric around the sort of front part of the seat or around the front and sides which will neaten it off. Okay so apply glue to the bottom then of the seat. The glue's starting to spill off the edge of my card. 
It's all a little bit warm and sticky in here today. And I just want to put a little bit around the back and a bit on each side as well. I'm trying to be careful not to get any on the wadding but I have at the front but I'll just snip that off before we start adding the fabric. And you see what I mean when that dries it just dries into those little clumps so you sort of get those little lumps showing through the fabric. I'm just going to snip that off along the front there like that and then you can place the chair where it will sort of sit and we'll begin at the back because it's easier and we're just going to snip from the edge of the fabric to the corner of the seat part. So make sure your seat's lined up and then just snip along like that and the same at the other side and then turn that around and snip a little square out of the corner there. Same at the other corner. There's going to be a lot of sort of snipping in this step. So you've got two little squares out of the corner like that and then we can actually pull that back flap up onto the bottom of the seat. Glue that down. And then come around to the side. And this time we want to snip from the fabric up to the edge of the leg there level with the edge of the leg and don't go right up to the leg you want to leave a little bit that we can then pull up onto the side in front of the leg so you're snipping about the thickness of your seat before you get to the edge if you see what I mean probably not explaining that very well but that will come up like that and then we will be snipping along here in fact let's do it now so then snip cross like that and that bit will stick at the edge of the leg there and we'll get rid of that bit so put a little bit more glue on top make sure the seats pushed back into the fabric here and then pull that next little flap over <laughs> and we're going to do that at the other side as well so level with the leg but about what will it be about six millimeters away from the base so we can fold that over a bit more glue that over like that so that's our back back bit there that will attach to the back of the seat and obviously our legs are at the front and now we want to get this bit as neat as we can so we want to make those same snips again on the inside edge of the leg but again not right up to the seat so we're leaving a flap that will fold over the front so make your little snip that leave in about six millimeters in front of the leg like that and then apply a little bit more glue and we'll pull that piece up and get it out of the way and I'm sort of doing it in sections like this so I can work out which bit I've got to do next you can probably tell I haven't done it like this before so I'm just sort of practicing as I go along really but we will make it nice and neat, so don't worry. We're not going to have lots of snips showing. And then pull that bit up. Nice and tight now, because we want a nice neat edge along the front. 
and then what we want to do is just trim these around so we can glue that fabric against the the front of the seat there and pull a little bit around so let's see how we can do it so straighten out your fabric like that so we can see what we're doing snip along the other side of the leg like that again not right up to the seat because we've got a little bit of room to tuck underneath we've got a little bit of room in front of the leg there where we can stick that down and then the same along that side so again just to the thickness of the leg just below the seat and then we can get rid of that little square in there let's do it like that so let's go along that line there and then along that line there and then we can glue all that in and cut that little corner flap off so let's put a little bit more glue on I'm just putting it in front of the leg on that little bit of wood that's sticking out around the leg there Again, I'm going to cut off that excess bit of wadding and then stick that flap down just in front of the leg and push it up as well so there's no fabric sort of showing on the front of the leg sort of press it in with your nail and then we'll do the same at the other side I will need to trim a bit more of that fabric there. Just pull that up again. Go along like that. And again, press it right down beside the leg there. And then we can trim off that corner. But again, so that you're not cutting into the fabric that's going to be showing at the top of the chair there. So just sort of go alongside it like that. And then when we come to do that strip, we can tuck all of that on the inside. So just sort of squeeze it together for now. And then we want to do the same on this other leg. Cut along like that first, leaving a little bit less there. This time to tuck under there, and then you can cut along that way as well. And then we're going to glue those down, trim a little bit more off there. in in this time so that I don't get glue on it and have to snip it off a little bit more glue in there as well trim that front edge again so you really only want a little tiny bit of fabric to fold in in front of the legs and don't worry about underneath because we'll be covering all of that as well with an extra piece to hold it all down so press it all in around the leg and then trim off a little triangle and then we'll fold that all in with our extra strip of fabric. Okay, so next cut a strip of fabric that's going to go around the front and then just sort of curl around the back of the seat so it doesn't have to go all the way around. We're just going to tuck it around a little bit and then fold over a hem at one long edge. Just a small hem, about three millimetres. 
press it into place and then we're going to glue it down. So we'll apply the glue and then again just let that dry off for 30 seconds or so. So then fold that over. And then we want to do another hem at the other edge so that this is as wide as our chair front. So just sort of line it up and then make work out how, where you need to make the hem, make the fold. And I need to go just under that little cross there. So again, crease that in. Because I've got the window open in here today, you can hear everything that's going on outside. And that was somebody just dragging their wheelie bin back in. <laughs> And then just double check that you're happy with the thickness of that. You want it to go right around the edge like that, but not be overhanging. So you want it to be the exact same thickness as your seat. So I, when I glue it down, I will just fold it in a little bit more, I think, just a tiny bit. There was already a bit of glue on there, so it's starting to stick. Let's lift that up. Again, okay, just let that dry off for a moment. And then fold that down like that and then we're actually going to apply glue to the back of this piece so place the seat in the center of the strip and again making sure that you're getting your lines lined up And then you can pick that up just to double check that you're in the right place and I need to come over a little bit there and I think where I've glued it down I've stretched it a little bit so I'm just sort of manipulating it so that the lines or stripes are lined up like that so press that down along the front and then pull it around the side and onto the back. And that just neatens up all of those little sort of cutouts that we made around the back of that side as well. I was going to cut an extra square for the bottom, but I actually think that does look quite neat. So if you're happy with how the bottom bit looks, I was going to say if you're happy with your bottom, <laughs> but if you're happy with how that looks, then you don't need to put an extra bit of fabric on. But if it looks messy under there, then you can just cut a piece of fabric and stick it on under there just to neaten that all off. Make sure there's no sort of wood showing or anything. So trim off any little loose ends of fabric very carefully and now we're actually ready to glue these two pieces together and the seat part will sit flush along the edges like that and also flush with the bottom of the back part there and what we'll do is we'll get some glue on and then we'll actually stand it up and make sure that it's sitting level because that's where we can make the adjustment if it's not. So apply glue along the back of the seat part. And now we've got the fabric on, just make sure that you're not um, sitting the seat in, in any glue. And I'm only saying that because that's something I'm likely to do. And then I realise realize I've got a big blob of glue right on the front of the seat or something. So get the two pieces attached make sure you've got that flush line underneath and then I'm squeezing it together at the sides to make sure that they've lined up press the two pieces together I'm just checking there that I'm happy with my lines I think I need to come down on that side a bit and then if you actually stand that up on a flat area of your desk not on your cutting mat because they can sometimes be rippled so stand it actually on your desk, let's move over there, 
and just make sure that it's not wobbling and mine is so I'm going to make a little adjustment I think I need to bring it up that side and you've got time to do this before the glue begins to really take have a look from the side as well make sure that it looks nice and straight and that it's not sloping forwards at the back and I'm pressing that together and what I'm actually going to do now is go and get some elastic bands and we'll put a bit of towel, kitchen towel around and then put some bands on just to really hold those two pieces together. So I'm take a piece of kitchen towel, fold it into a strip and this is just so that we don't mark the fabric with the bands. Put that around like that, careful not to knock the back out of place. And then I've got a couple of good sort of strong elastic bands here. And I'm really sorry if you're one of those people that's a bit squeamish about bands. <laughs> I don't really like the idea of them pinging onto my fingers myself, but I like that. Make sure that they're sitting sort of around the actual front of the chair. And then I'm just going to put that on my um, flat work surface again, just to make sure I haven't knocked that out. And if you have, then you can still make a little adjustment. I think it just went up that side a little bit. Just try that again. Yeah, I'm happy with that now. And I think the one elastic band will be enough. And obviously if you've got some sort of good sized clamps, you can use those and just sort of clamp them around the, the back and side like that. But do still use the kitchen towel so that your clamps don't dent your fabric. Okay, so I'm going to leave that to dry now. And there is the completed chair and I'm really pleased with that. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial as well and that this is one that you'll have a go at and as I said in the intro this is actually based on our uh, dining room chairs so if you wanted to use this as a dining room chair I think that would look really nice as well and I might even remake these for my dining room when we get around to that room of the house. Now if you do have a go at making this I'd love to see photographs so do share your photos in my Facebook group Little Bits and Pieces by You and I'm sure you're already a member but if not you can request to join through my Facebook page so I'll pop a link to that below. Now I can't wait to try this in the study so let's go and see how it looks. I think that looks really nice and it brings a splash of blue as well into this area of the room which is looking quite pale at the moment but I will be adding lots of colour to the desk and I'll be having a little fabric notice board above or a little fabric memo board rather above there but I really like how it pulls that fabric together so I've got a cushion over in the back there in the same fabric one on the sofa as well and also that little lamp so it sort of pulls it all together so early next week I'm going to start filming another episode of My Doll's House Diary and in that episode I'll be giving you a recap on what I've done so far to the doll's house and also telling you what I'm going to be doing next so do look out for that but that's it for today thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon bye <laughs>